friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that. And for those of you who are new, this is just a basically a semi-weekly vlog that I do to help steer you towards maybe other videos I already have out that you may not know about. Uh, show you some of the things I have going on, including different experiments I've been working on and so on and so forth. So let's get to it and talk about what I've got out here today. So one of the things I want to do is make another batch of some chocolate extract. So this is some pretty good stuff and I've been experimenting with it more lately. And uh, just I have a video just on making extracts and at the, at the time that I was doing those flavored extracts, a lot of them I was just experimenting with. And I'll go ahead and link to that video down below, but I'm also going to show you how I'm going to make this extract today. It might be slightly different than the one that I did in the other video. Um, I definitely want to make it a little bit stronger. So let's get to that and I'll show you how I do it. So I'm going to take this jar. I want to make a bigger batch this time. And what I have right here are uh, cacao nibs. So they're raw chocolate nibs in other words it's that cacao means it's already raw and these are organic and if you're interested in these ones especially if you can't find them locally i'll go ahead and put my amazon affiliate link to these down below the ones that i get you can get them on the subscribe and save and save a little bit more money that way too but anyway i am going to put in a, a bunch i'm using a pint jar today and so I'm going to put in quite a bit. I want a nice, strong chocolate flavor that I can use in uh, flavoring the whipped cream that I might put on the chocolate cream pie and various other things, including the hazelnut milk that I'll get to in a bit. So today I'm going to be using half of my homemade wine instead of the rum. Rum makes a really good, spiced rum in particular, makes a really good flavor for your extracts, especially the vanilla. But uh, today I want to do mostly the homemade wine and that makes it cheap and totally organic. And I know exactly what's in this because it's all made from homegrown goodies. And then here I, the other thing I'm going to add is a little bit of non-GMO uh, glycerin, food grade glycerin. And that's going to give it a certain amount of sweetness and help break up the uh, alcohol. Though, yes, uh, glycerin is a type of alcohol, it's, uh, and it may have some of the same effects. It's not going to make you give you that funny feeling that uh, like an al other kinds of alcohol like wine or rum or vodka will. So that's a way you can kind of break that up if you want, if you're concerned about the alcohol content. But be, uh, but just remember that anything you're going to use your extracts in, a lot of times is going to be something you're going to cook anyway, or you're using in such a small amount that you, and you're using it with food, that whatever doesn't get cooked out, you're still should not feel any effects from it because the rest of it should be absorbed by the food that you eat. I know I've never had any issues with that. So now I'm just going to put the lid on that and I'm going to shake that up really good to mix the uh, wine and the glycerin together really well and then get that going. And then what I'm going to try to do is remember to shake this at least once a week and I'm going to let it sit for up to two months at least or at least until I need it and then I'll be mixing it in. Look how dark this turned out. See how dark that is? Uh, and this, though the wine had some color to it, uh, you can see a little bit of that there. It's already taken on some of the color of the cacao beans or the cacao nibs. And so um, by the time this is done, this should be a nice, dark, rich brown color. So I'm going to make sure I mark the top of that of, with today's date and then keep an eye on it. I like to store it in a dark cabinet, so that makes it harder to remember to shake it. Uh, unfortunately, but the longer it sits, it's not going to hurt anything. So um, remember, if you're using glycerin for an extract, it's going to shorten the shelf time of it. But I have found mixing it with wine or vodka or rum actually gives it a, a still gives it a very long shelf life. In fact, I've never had any go bad on me. They, I just know what they say is if you do a glycerin water base extract only, it has a shelf life of four months. Um, I've never done it that way. I've always mixed it with alcohol of some sort and so um, I've never had it go bad. So while we're on the topic of extracts, 
I have here one of my more recent antibiotic extracts that I started. Now I have a video just on this that I will go ahead and link to in the description box down below. But this one is different because this one is a mix of, it's about one part to one part to one part of nasturtium leaves, oregano, and echinacea. So this is all, this is echinacea leaves, not the roots. I haven't dug up my echinacea roots yet. But uh, these are all also the oregano and the echinacea as well as the nasturtium leaves are all great natural antibiotics. And I thought since I didn't collect as much, I just didn't get as much uh, nasturtium this year. I decided I would make some batches using a blend of all these others as well. And for this one, instead of using glycerin or rum or vodka, I stuck strictly with just using my homemade wine. So that keeps it cheap. That keeps it totally organic. I don't have to worry about paying a lot of money for an expensive organic vodka or whatever I've got my homemade wine I have found that the homemade wine makes an excellent extract now I can't call it a tincture because it's not uh, made with a 80 proof and above alcohol but uh, I have found that with all the medicinal extracts I have made whether it be a pain extract or whatever using the homemade wine has been sufficient I just take a little bit more of it than I would if I was going to make it with an 80 proof alcohol uh, like vodka or rum so I might take a tablespoon maybe two tablespoons tops depending on what it is if I'm making it as an extract like this whereas if I was to make it as a tincture it might be a teaspoon to one tablespoon tops so just so you know take a little bit more but it still ends up being better all the way around and you know just a lot cheaper that I have found so anyway it's going to be a matter of choice if you're interested in making your own tinctures and learning more about herbs I'm going to go ahead again and link to the book that I always have linked in my description box and here's the book right here. I figured I'd go grab it. So great book. This is actually my favorite now of all my herbal books. And uh, if you buy this through my affiliate link, not only do you support us a little bit, you're also helping Amy Fuel, who is a fellow homesteader. So this is the Homesteader's Herbal Companion. She also has a YouTube channel, and she's also the one that founded Homesteaders of America Conference that they have every year. So anyway great book highly recommended so we talked about the homemade wine here and making extracts so with that in mind let's talk a little bit about the, my most recent batch of homemade wine so i've got a jug right there that's my last jug of the apple wine that i've been making so this is for my own homemade apples i pressed them out made it into juice took the juice and my homemade fermentation starter and then some added sugar and got the wine going i had four gallons and so what I've been doing is saving the avocado oil bottles, the avocado oil I like so much for making my skin cream. And I also do some cooking with this. But anyway, I've been taking the bottles and washing them out real good. And right in here is one of the five bottles I have so far of my homemade apple wine uh, bottled up. I am going to make some labels to put on here too. And uh, so anyway, I will get that done. In fact, I'll try to get it done today so I can put a picture right here so you can see what it looks like with the label on it. And what I thought was interesting is though while the wine was brewing, the color of it got lighter and lighter and lighter. But then as it got to the end and I went to rack it, the color went back to being a little bit darker again. But it's still, it is a beautiful color and it has it does have a really nice flavor so as i said before even though i don't drink i like to have a lot of wine on hand for various things for making extracts for cooking with for um marinating with and various other things so i have a video just on the many uses for wine that i will link to down below as well as the playlist on how you can easily make your own wine out of your, whatever juice uh, whatever fruit that you have in abundance that you're going to make juice of or even if you want to go buy juice and turn that into wine you can do that too so it's an easy process you don't have to buy a special yeast to do that if you use the fermentation starter so um anyway one of the other things i plan on doing with some of this and why i want to bottle it and label it is to have it on hand for the sake of a barter if need be because uh we we all have far more than we need because i'm still this bottle right here this jug i still have a, a, lots more homemade wine from last year it's taken me a long time to work through it even with all the extracts i've been making with it so and all the other uses I use it for. So I really don't need four more gallons of wine to add to it, but having some uh, put up for barter, I think will be an excellent uh, option. Talking about medicinal things, uh, what I have here is some of my 
cold and flu syrup, cough cold and flu syrup that I made. It's, a, it's mostly elderberries, but it's got other good things in it. I will link to my recipe down below. And believe it or not, this is the same batch I made in that video that's two years old, and it's still good. I keep it in the refrigerator, but I believe part of the reason it stays good is because of the raw honey. Now, I'm not going to recommend everybody keep it for that long. Technically, you're told a few months in the refrigerator, but it's lasted two years and it's still good. Now, the funny thing about this is um, we don't get colds and flus around here, or at least we haven't in years, but I still, uh, this is why it, we still have this two years later. But the um, I use it for my throat because you can hear I'm kind of raspy right now. That's because Patrick and I just shot a long video where I read a whole bunch of comments. And now I'm shooting another video where I'm doing a lot of talking. And because I have nodules that developed on my vocal cords years and years ago from years of teaching dance, martial arts, and being in music and being a singer for many, many years of my life, it just... It took a toll on my vocal cords and I developed nodules. It's they're totally benign. There's nothing wrong with it. It just they get they swell up, they get sore, and you know, yeah, and so I don't I don't do much singing anymore because of that. And talking for long periods of time can like this, like doing these two videos back to back can take a toll on it and they, I can feel them kind of burning in there. Well, what I found with this is especially when I start coughing a lot from it, it has really helped a lot to soothe it. So I'm going to be making some more. And what I plan on doing is, um, so I've got my, I've got my dried elderberries right here. And these are from this year. I've got some homegrown, uh, organic marshmallow root. So I grow my own marshmallow. I've been doing it for years. One of my favorite herbs in my garden. I do sell the seeds on our Etsy store. Again, you can find that link in the description box below. And then you'll see at the end of the video, it'll pop up here as a little red nasturtium flower if you're interested in looking at some seeds or any of the other goodies we have for sale. But anyway, I'm going to be putting the marshmallow root in this batch. Last time, I think I put the marshmallow leaves and flowers in there, which have very similar benefits. The root is more powerful. So since I have plenty of root on hand, because I've been digging up some of my plants, that's what I'm going to be putting in there, because the, the root is one of the things that's really beneficial to, um, to help soothe any of the mucous membrane, any of that kind of stuff in there. And I have found this to be one of the most helpful things for my throat when it gets sore and I start coughing and all that. So I'll be doing that today. I also will be adding the raw honey in after, after I make the tea. So make sure that I do believe I pointed that out in the video, but if you're using raw honey, honey of any kind, you really shouldn't be cooking it at all. So add it in after it's cooled down enough where it's just warm, room temperature at least, then add your honey in there and let it, uh, you know, let it dissolve in there because the raw honey is also very excellent for soothing and helping to heal. Got, it has a lot of great benefits that will, will help with so many different things. And then, of course, I'll be adding plenty of spice to it as well because spices are really good. So if you're using it as a cold and flu remedy or as a preventative measure, like I mentioned in that video I did recently on cough, cold, and, or cold and flu prevention and various different ideas, uh, the spices are going to be really good for that preventatively. And so I also use this as a preventative measure if we're going to be going somewhere. And I know there's a lot of gunk going around. There's going to be a lot of people there. I'll take this along with some colloidal silver to help boost our immune system so that we... Uh, because echinacea, echinacea is another really good one that I'll use in here as well to help prevent getting colds and flus. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was... So I, I just did a video on some of my bulk purchases and I talked about the hazelnuts and I made, I did make that hazelnut milk and it turned out really good. I don't like it near as much as the Brazil nut milk, but um, I tried making some chocolate syrup out of it and I don't think I cooked it quite long enough. It's still pretty runny, but it, it has a nice flavor. So somewhat little bit tastes like Nutella, but not that much because the hazelnut flavor isn't quite that strong. But using the, that hazelnut milk in here in replace of the cow's milk or other dairy milk is one good option for making your chocolate syrup if you're wanting something that's dairy free. And then instead of putting the, the tablespoon of butter into it, if you haven't seen my, my video, I have a recipe video, I'll go ahead and link to that down below as well. And again, don't forget to hit show more if you want to see all those links. They're, you're not gonna be able to see them unless you click on the right there below the video 
where it says show more and then you'll be able to see all the links to like Amy's book and the various things. So anyway, um, if you, instead of using the butter, if you need to be dairy free or you're vegan, then simply put in a tablespoon of coconut oil. That's going to help give it that richness as well as keeping it dairy free. And then using your various nut milks is, is just an option you can use. I've done this with other nut milks too. The hazelnut does add a real nice flavor, but any nut milk that you want to make, whether it be cashew or almond or Brazil nut or whatever it is, uh, uh, I don't recommend pumpkin seed milk for this though. I, I see that as more as something that you'd want to use in something that's more savory rather than sweet. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that for this week or two weeks, however long it takes until I do another one. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. <music>